Hi everyone, I'm Ricardo Russo, a master's student at the Alborg University in Copenhagen, and this presentation will be on f a building finite difference schemes physical models in Faust. And to do that, we will be using the FDS library, which is the result of a work I've done at Gram in, in the previous months, with the goal of introducing finite difference scheme synthesis into the Faust programming language. This is the agenda for today. Uh, this workshop will be divided into two main parts. Uh, in the first part, uh, I will introduce some of the FDS theory. Some of you may be already familiar with this, uh, for others it will be completely new. Um, this part is mainly oriented towards those who are new to uh, FDS and is intended to give you some of the uh, some of the basis of the mathematical basis that will be useful throughout this tutorial. Um, then I will move to the hands-on section. Uh, first we will implement the first FDS model without using the library. This to um, understand the basic principles of, of um, finding different schemes in Faust. Then we will uh, have a brief look to the cellular automata approach uh, which is used inside the library and later we will uh, build all the schemes we obtained on paper in, in the first part by using the, the library. Lastly we will take a brief look at the interaction models. So first what is a finding different scheme? It's a discrete model that simulates a continuous system. It's a method which is largely used in engineering for system simulation, and it's actually a pretty old idea. Basically, it consists in numerically approximating a continuous system, usually a system of partial differential equations, with a discrete space-time grid, uh, like the one that we can see here in this image, um, where we discretized the time and space axis, obtaining a series of discrete points. So why FDS? What are the advantages and disadvantages with respect to other physical modeling techniques? Well, um, directly simulating a mathematical model allows to not make any assumptions on the mathematical solution. So um, this makes this method very generalizable and flexible and also very accurate. So uh, for example, it's easily applicable to nonlinear systems. On the other hand though, it's um, really computationally expensive. Um, at the moment, the guys from the Stefan Milblau group are working on state-of-the-art physical models which can uh, produce uh, realistic sounds, but also which require less and less um, computational power. Here are a couple of examples. This was a trombone, and here's a... So, as you can see, uh, this method allows to model all the tiny details that make a sound realistic. So, uh, first, let's start from the basis. Um, the starting point for uh, finding different schemes is that musical acoustic systems are defined by partial differential equations, uh, PDEs. Uh, which are accompanied by regions of definition, boundary conditions, and forcing terms. The state of this system depends on the time instant and the spatial coordinates. It can be defined as a function u, uh, which depends on uh, x and t. So the first steps for defining a finite difference scheme physical model are first to formulate the mathematical model. Then we need to define the space and time sampling steps. Um, and once we obtain those, we can discretize the partial differential operators to obtain an, up an update equation. Uh, lastly, we need to implement the boundary conditions. So first, let me do a parenthesis on the notation that we will be using. This is the same as it's used by Stefan Milbao in his book, uh, Numerical Sound Synthesis. And it's basically just a way for um, writing partial derivatives. So um, here, instead of having this uh, uh, expanded notation, which is most commonly used, we can just um, write it with a sub subscript a, um, variable, uh, which indicates the variable in which we're going to derive. And this, for example, first order, second order, and mixed derivative. This is just a notation, basically. So. Let's get into the real stuff and build our first um, fine difference scheme uh, mathematical model. So, 
uh, the first thing we need to do is to define a mathematical model. And the simplest possible equation in acoustics is the 1D wave equ equation. This is a second order partial differential equation in um, time and space with solution uh, u, uh, which depends on uh, time on time and space. Um, a partial differential equation, well, a differential equation uh, is basically an equation in which the, um, uh, the unknown is not variable, but it's a, um, a function. And uh, so in this case, our function is this u. And u represents the state of the system um, at time t and position x. And the state is, for example, the, the vertical, vertical displacement of a, of a vibrating string or the pressure value inside the tube or um, things like this. Um, C is the speed of sound in the medium. Um, and the medium is the material um, of which the system is made. So, for example, for a string is metal, for um, a tube is it's air. Um, T is defined over a positive real domain, because of course uh, time can't be negative. And um, X um, is usually bounded over a finite length L, which is the length of the string, the length of the, of the tube, or in general of our object. And um, we can calculate the fundamental frequency of vibration using this um, relation here. So we have our mathematical model and we said that the second step is to um, obtain the sampling grid. And to do that we need to first define two sampling steps, k and h, for um, time and uh, space. <coughs> Um, these are just two numbers um, that define um, the, the space between the sampling points. Uh, so then we can move on the grid with the two integer indexes n and l. And um, so what we obtain uh, one, once we discretize the, our system and we simulate it, what we obtain is a discrete u of um, ln, which approximates the continuous solution to the system uh, that we saw before. And uh, this discrete function will be made of uh, n equals l over h data points, because of course the number of points will depend on the sampling grid. Uh, so if um, our l is one meter, for example, a one meter long string, then we will obtain a number of points with, which depends on um, one meter over the um, sampling step. So we need to be aware that um, the two sampling steps are not independent and they're actually bounded by a stability condition. Um, in general, finite difference schemes physical models are um, pretty, uh, tend to be unstable and when they are unstable, they blow up. So um, the, 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 the signal goes to infinity and uh, what you hear is just a, a really weird noise from your uh, headphones. So um, uh, to be sure that um, our system will be um, stable, we need to um, we need to impose this condition. And uh, so we cannot choose these two uh, steps independently. And this is the current Frederick Slevy condition, um, CFL. So we have our um, mathematical model, we have um, defined our sampling steps, and now we can go on and discretize the partial differential operators, which is actually the core of finite difference schemes. Um, here we have the difference operators in time and space in different versions, and what you need to know is that the centered one is more uh, accurate. This, is, looks, this looks like a lot of math, I know, uh, but actually these are just uh, basic algebraic operations. Um, this can, ben, can then be um, combined to obtain higher order derivatives. Okay, so uh, we have everything we need and then we, um, we can now discretize um, the mathematical model. So we started with this equation, uh, which is in the continuous. Then we can apply difference operators. Uh, I will try to show uh, most of the steps <coughs> to make it more clear for you. So uh, we can then expand these um, as we saw in the previous slide. And this is what we obtain. Um, then we need to solve for uh, u of 
n plus 1, which is our unknown, because of course it's the next step for, um, um, for every single data point, and it's what we are looking for. So if we solve for, um, for this, um, this is what we obtain, uh, which is an explicit recursion relation uh, can, that can be ex um, directly solved numerically. So here you can see a graphical example of the time and space dependency for the relation we obtained in the last slide. Basically, to get the state of our unknown, U, L of n plus 1, uh, what we need is the current state of the point L, the current state of the two neighbors, L minus 1 and L plus 1, and the past state of L. So, you might have asked yourself, how do I know the current and previous steps? How do I get them? Well, we decide them. So, uh, this is called setting the initial conditions, and, um, well, to make things more simple, we can set everything at zero. So what we do is, uh, when we start the simulations, we first set all the data points for the current and previous time steps to zero. So we have our initial um, starting uh, uh, states. And also, what do we do at boundaries? Uh, when we get to the boundary of uh, to the endpoints, for example, of our string, we would need uh, the next point to calculate the next state of this point, uh, but we don't have them. Um, and there are many things we can do. Um, this is called setting the boundary conditions. The most simple and used boundary conditions are these two, uh, the Dirichlet and Neumann conditions. In the Dirichlet condition, what we do is simply we consider the next point, the virtual point, to be zero. Um, this is, um, for example, the case of a string uh, where the next point, uh, well, the, the two endpoints are fixed and they can't move. Um, the Neumann, the Neumann, Neumann condition, on the other hand, um, involves solving a little derivative uh, like this. And it can be considered as a free end. So we have our point that it's free to move. For example, it's free at string, which is free to move on one uh, side. In the case of a tube, uh, things are uh, the other way around. It's pretty weird, but uh, it's um, you can consider that in, if a um, tube has an open end, the pressure in that po in that point is zero. So um, because it's the pressure of the, the atmospheric pressure. So um, you can see it this way. So now let's go on and try to implement a Neumann condition in the point L um, equals zero. We need to solve uh, this little derivative. And if we do that, expanding this operator, this is what we obtain. So um, then we can apply this to the update equation that we had before. And this is what we obtain. So this is the update equation to be used only when we want to calculate the next state of um, the point L equals zero. Okay, so we did it. We got the algorithm for our first fine difference schemes physical model. As you will see, we'll see though, the sound is pretty boring and uh, especially in Faust, since it's a real time, it will ring forever. We can fix this by adding a damping term. Every instrument in the real world experiences damping, which is the cause of the outcoming sound to fade out. And we can describe this in math with a term which depends on the velocity or the, well, the first derivative. And here, sigma zero is called the damping coefficient. It's a number which depends on the physical characteristics of the object. We can go on and discretize the damped wave equation as we did before for the 1D wave equation. Uh, we apply the operators, uh, the difference operators, and we can then expand them. Now, we will skip some math here, but uh, you're very welcome to try and see if you obtain the same result. Um, this is what, you, what we obtained, and this is the update relation for the damped wave equation. Um, this update equation has the same uh, space-time dependency and stability condition of the one we saw before, but as we will see, it sounds a bit better. So. Before moving to the hands-on section of this tutorial, I would like to introduce you a bit to how these algorithms are usually implemented. In uh, imperative programming languages, we can use arrays. So we allocate three arrays for the states, um, for the time states, n minus one and n plus one, each one with a number of data points equal to the total number of partial grid points given by L over H. So 
we have, for example, our one meter long string, and uh, we will have a number of data points, which of course depends on the spatial sampling step H. Then we allocate three arrays, each one with uh, that number of uh, data points. And uh, we cycle between them, updating the states at audio rate. We can then update, obtain sound by reading the current state of a single um, data point in one of the arrays. So this code snippet um, shows how the 1D wave equation is usually calculated in MATLAB. Um, the first cycle, this one, is on the time samples, like an audio process callback, for example. And this uh, cycle is the loops between all the spatial points. So uh, this is exactly the update equation we obtained before. And uh, we cycle over all the L data points with, uh, to a maximum of N, which is the maximum number of spatial data points. Then we read um, the, the samples at out position, which is one of the data points. And then we update the states. In Faust, we don't have arrays, so we have to find a completely different way of doing this, as we will see in the next section of this tutorial. Okay, so now it's time to get our hands dirty and uh, implement all the algorithms that we obtained on paper in the last part of the tutorial. Uh, I will try to do everything with the online compiler, uh, which you can reach at this address, faustide.gram.fr. Uh, so everyone can follow with any operating system. So uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to understand how to build a funny different scheme in Faust without using arrays. Um, so let's start with the simplest one, the 1D wave equation, and just to be. So we are on the same page. This is what I'm talking about. This, is, this was the first um, scheme we obtained in the last part of the tutorial and it's um, the simplest uh, equation, the simplest possible equation in acoustics. So I'm gonna write the equation here so you can um, you can see it. So this is the equation that we want to um, to calculate. So the, the first thing we want to do is we want to set our sampling steps. Um, in audio what we do is to set the time step first um, contrary to what is done usually in other engineering applications, as um, this depends on the uh, system sampling rate. So we can now set um, k equals 1 over ma.sr. Um, here I'm using uh, the ma.sr function, which returns the system sampling rate. Now, we saw that um, we can't choose the two steps independently, but we have to, uh, we have that, um, let me write this, lambda needs to be minor or equal to one. So, um, this also means um, that h needs to be greater or equal to c times k. So first, um, we, what we have to do is we need to set the, um, the speed of sound in the medium and we will, um, we will set it as 344 meters per second. And this is just the speed of sound in the air. Um, so now uh, we are ready to set the space sampling step. We will um, set lambda equals one, uh, so um, as this is the most sta stable condition that we can have. So we are um, as near as possible to the stability condition. So we can say that um, h equals c times k. And then let me write this for simplicity. We have that lambda equals uh, C times K over H. Okay, so now we want to actually code the update equation. Um, what we can do is to start by coding a function which does the calculations we want. Uh, so it takes the present state of itself and the neighbors, which we will call um, 
uh, west and east instead of these, which is a bit more complicated to write. And um, the past state of itself and outputs the next state. Um, so to do this, uh, we can write update eq. We'll uh, take an input um, u west, u and u east. So current state and two neighbors equals, um, and this will actually do this. Let me just copy paste for simplicity. So um, two times one minus lambda squared uh, times uh, u minus u delayed. Um, this is the delay operator in Faust. Um, basically, this means one sample delay. Then plus uh, lambda squared times u west plus u east. Okay, um, this can work um, and this will calculate uh, our update equation. However, if we want to uh, get sound, we need to interact with uh, our scheme, our mesh. So um, let's add a forcing term to do this. Uh, we can add f in, and we will have to also get this from outside the equation. So I'm gonna put this first. Okay, great. So um, we have our equation. Um, that will calculate the state, uh, but as you might remember, this is valid only for one data point. So um, what we can do is we can uh, place many of these functions in parallel with the Faust um, par um, iteration, um, obtaining our uh, mesh structure, our scheme structure. So first, um, let's define the number of points that we will want. Uh, let's choose something simple. So, so uh, now we can define our structure. So um, as I said, uh, we can use the par operation. Let's build a function called build on the scheme. This will depend on the number of points. This equals to par e um points and update queue and we can, we can already try to run this um to see what we get so let's write uh, process uh, equals uh, build one scheme and points let's try and this is what we sorry what we obtain. As you can see, we placed three of these blocks, these blocks here in parallel. And what these represent, they uh, you can see it, you can see this as three elements inside an array. So each element uh, in the array will perform the um, update equation operation. But of course, um, this uh, will not work at all because we need to fill the neighbor points. Um, and when I mean, when I say neighbor points, what I mean is that this point here, for example, will take um, the forcing component, the west neighbor state itself, and the east neighbor state. So um, he will need uh, a term from the outside. Um, the forcing term from the outside, but also the states for from this point and this point. So to get these states, uh, we can create a feedback loop. Let me call uh, a function called. Uh, let me create a function called model. Uh, this will also take an in input the number of points, <laughs> and then we can. Uh, um, and call uh, build one the scheme points, uh, then 
here and as you know, var plus points. And then we call process equals to model and points. Uh, so here what we did is we declared a feedback loop using the tilde operator and uh, bus is simply a way to um, to call a number of, of signals in parallel. So here we are requiring that um, what comes out from this goes in a feedback loop um, inside um, a bus with uh, three signals. So let's try and run this. And oh, okay. So this is what we get, and as you can see, uh, this is more clear now. Uh, we created a feedback loop with um, as okay. So since we have three points, he created three um, feedback loops with this bus function. Now the problem, as you can see. Um, is that we need to bring the signals into the cor their correct places. Now they're just uh, going into the first uh, empty spots they, they find. Um, and to do this, we can use the root primitive. Um, this function works by taking the signals and defining routing uh, with the numbers. We will have three state signal inputs and three force inputs, so six inputs. In output, we will have three states plus one force for each equation block. So four times three equals 12. Let me, um, okay, um, let me delete this process because we won't need it anymore. So as I, as I was saying, we have, um, let me call a function called routing points equals uh, root, so in, uh, in the root primitive, we first need to define the number of inputs and the number of outputs. So I said it's six, uh, which again, um, it's three, three state signals, signal inputs, one for each point and three force inputs, one for each point. And then we will have in output um, three um, states plus one for signal for each equation block, so it's 12. So um, now things are gonna get a little bit complicated, so let me um, write everything and then I will explain later. Okay, so um, I created my routing and what I did is I modified the um, um, this version here, which I had before, which I'm gonna delete, and I added um, before um, the before our scheme, I added my routing. So um, this is gonna take the signals that are fed back uh, from this bus, and this function is gonna take care to route each signal where it has to go. So let me delete this line here, and then let me call the process uh, model and points. Let's run this, and again, this is what we obtain. So, um, this is what the routing does. So, if you look at these numbers, what I what I did was this. So, I took the first signal in input, so one, and routed it to the third output here. One two, three, because um, root, the root primitive is uh, one indexed, and uh, we'll see why. And then also the second, the, the first input, I rooted it to the sixth output, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, the same for each other signal. So I took um, the second uh, input and rooted to the fourth, the seventh, and 10th output. And these for each uh, signal. Then I took these, uh, which are the, um, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth 
um, input and routed. These are the forcing signals and routed to the first um, input for each um, equation block. As you can see um, here, there are oh, uh, here we have two um, connections where there is a zero. Um, root is one indexed before because if I place a zero, this means send a zero signal, so a, a null signal, and this is what I do at the boundaries. So here and here, what I'm doing is I'm um, implementing a Dirichlet boundary condition. So I'm um, assuming that the neighbor that should be here and here is fixed. So it, it's, it always sends um, a zero position signal. Okay, so we have our, um, our working model, uh, but however, we cannot get any sound from it because we need to um, we need something to interact with uh, with our mesh. First, um, well, as a force model, we can simply, for now, we can simply um, create a button which I'll call play. Force button. And we will we will send um, this through um, through a, through um, an impulsify function, which uh, will uh, turn the button signal to an impulse. Then we need to choose which um, which point we want to send the um, the force to. Of course, we can um, we can excite each point um, at the same time, but uh, it's not really realistic, right? It's like I have a string and I pluck it in every single point um, at the same time. It's not really physical. So, um, so yeah, let's create. Um, let's start by creating two sliders, uh, and then we want to code some functions to, um, well, to send the this signal to the right into the, into the right place. So. Point selector in will get the number of points and the point we want, uh, and we can use the uh, select out and function, um, and this will get the same inputs, and also we want. Uh, Point selector out, um, same inputs, and we can use the select n. So um, this function takes one input and outputs um, n um, outputs n signals, where each one is zero except the one selected on i. So this is perfect for the input signal, whereas the select and function takes um, uh, this number of signal and, and what it does is it outputs only one of the signals it gets in input. And sorry, I made a mistake here. Uh, this is points. Because this is the number of points, this is the point we want. Okay, so um, now let's try this out. Uh, we can call our process. Now we have the force signal and we route that into the point selector in function, which we will take. Uh, and Then this will go, uh, will be plugged into our model function, uh, which is this one, and takes endpoints, and then this will go through point selector out, um, endpoints out. Point. Okay, so um, let's try this out. And well, of course, now he's complaining because I have another process defined here. Uh, let me take this out 
and rerun this. Okay, so um, we it works. And well, as you can see, uh, this was pretty annoying. And the problem is that the number of points is so tiny that um, the outcoming sound is super um, high. But uh, but yeah, we achieved it. We built our first fine difference scheme in Faust. Um, however, uh, well, if you think about it, it was a huge pain. And uh, if any of you had any experience in coding fine difference schemes in MATLAB, for example, uh, you in this moment you might be thinking, okay, but uh, in MATLAB this is way way more easy, way easier. And um, you're right. You're actually right. Um, so um, we can, uh, let's say, we can uh, use a different approach. If, um, if you look at the update equation, uh, you will see that um, this is linear. So what we're doing is we're simply applying some coefficients to each neighbor signal. So this is the first coefficient, uh, and it's applied to the current state of the point. Minus one is applied to the past state, and um, lambda squared is applied to the two neighbor signals. So, um, and let me show you something here. Um, since the derivatives are mirrored, we can define uh, a neighborhood with a radius. So, um, basically, for example, in this case, we could define our neighborhood radius as one, because we, we need one point on the left and uh, one point on the right. Also, we need to define a time coefficient, which indicates how uh, many um, times back on time we want, we want to go. And in this case, it would be one again, because we just want n minus one. Uh, and this approach is similar to what is done in, um, in a family of algorithms, actually, called cellular automata. And um, this is exactly the approach which is used inside the FTS library. So um, let's try and build the same, well, almost the same uh, algorithm, but by using the library. Now, instead of, instead of writing the, um, the a function to perform the equation as we did before, I will go on and just define the coefficients um, that are going to be applied to each of the various states. So we have, let's say, a equals um, 2 times 1 minus lambda squared. We have b equals um, lambda squared and c equals minus 1. And these are exactly the coefficients that we can see here. Um, this is pretty clear, I hope. Um, then we want to define the neighborhood radius and the time coefficients. And the time coefficient. So um, we said that they are going to be r equals 1 and t equals 1. So uh, what we want to do now is to create a coefficient matrix. So we want to arrange the coefficients so that they make sense for the algorithm. Um, so A will be applied to the current state of the point, um, B to its neighbors, and C to the past state. So um, for um, the time instant n, we have, we can call mid class equals B A B. And um, for time instant n minus one, we only have the current point, so um, L n minus one. We don't have, for example, um, L plus one n minus one or L minus one n minus one. So uh, we can uh, apply zero where we don't want to get the signal. So int coef del equals zero C zero. No, sorry, zero. 
Um, I hope it, this makes sense. Um, if I go back on the scheme, uh, what, what I'm doing here, uh, this would be mid coef. So um, this part here is A. This here is B and is gonna go to the neighbors. And this one is C. And we don't want the neighbors past signals. So here's why there is a zero here. So um, we already implemented the uh, 1D wave equation. So let's make things a bit more complicated and let's implement different boundary condition for the left point. Uh, so what we want is to implement the Neumann condition, which is um, this one, the one we saw before. And uh, let me write the, um, the equation for uh, the, the Neumann uh, uh, condition. So um, now we want to define an another coefficient, which is going to be d equals uh, 2 times lambda squared. And the corresponding matrix, which is going to be left coef equals um, 0 a d. Um, this is the left boundary. So we don't have, we physically don't have another point to get the signal from. So, um, well, the coefficient is going to just be 0. Um, a, it's the same, as you can see here. And here we have d, which is 2 times lambda squared. And for the past state, we still have c, so we don't have to define anything else. So um, now we want to decide what the coefficient scheme will be. So um, we want to set the coefficients for each point in the mesh. So first we want to set number of points again, and it's gonna still be three. Um, then defining the scheme is very simple. We can simply use a part iteration um, since each point will have the same co um, coefficients matrix matrices except for the left for the left one, and we will put the left one uh, first because well it's uh, left. Um, so let's call our scheme equals uh, left. I'm sorry, left coef um, mid coef. Well, again, because um, for the delayed version, we don't have another coefficient for the left point. And then we can use the par iteration. So um, it's going to be E minus 1. It's going to be points minus 1 because, well, we already defined one point, the coefficients for one point. And then mid coef, uh, mid coef, the Okay, so um, now the hard part is done, and we can now simply call one library function um, from the FDS library to obtain our working model. So uh, let's call uh, process equals uh, fd dot model one d because it's, we are in one dimension, uh, and points. This will take into input the number of points, um, the radius, the time coefficient and the scheme. Um, so, um, points. And, well, let's try and uh, run this. And as you can see, it is a bit different, but this is exactly the same model that we obtained before, except, and if you check here, this is the same routing that we had in the previous model. Except that now, um, each um, point takes in input also the scheme coefficients. As before, if we want to interact with the mesh, we need to put uh, some other functions. And um, now, however, we might want also to get the signal or um, to excite our, um, our mesh in between two points. And to do that, we can use the interpolation functions that you can find inside the library.
So instead of getting these, we can um, try and do something else. So we can call our new process function uh, play. Uh, this time I'm gonna need to uh, spread this signal. And then we can call fd dot in interp 1d um, and points and this takes uh, as before it takes in input the number of points and the point that we want um, then we can call fd dot on the, on d uh, and yeah again takes the number of points r t and the scheme well then uh, we can call also fd dot in interp on the out which is just the uh, it's the version of this function just to get one signal basically so uh, and points out point and let's try and run this Okay, so uh, this works and it's, uh, it's uh, just as annoying as it was before. Um, but I hope you agree that this was easier than the approach we, we used before. Now the cool thing is that um, while before we had to change the routing for, um, for example, if, the, if we wanted to change the number of points or change the type of, of a scheme, we had to rewrite the routing each time manually and that's very annoying but um but in this case we can simply for example change the number of points and also yes another thing since we are linearly interpolating we can um, change the step um, to be a float and so we can get the signal in between um, two points and also let's make this um, stereo uh, so and okay so let's run this Uh, this takes a bit more. Okay, um, as you can see, um, things are starting to get a bit more interesting. But, um, but uh, we don't have dumping uh, yet, so um, this is still ringing forever. So uh, let's add some dumping, dumping to obtain something more interesting. Um, so the first thing we notice is that we have another parameter, uh, which is dumping coefficient. We can now um, simply take this value, uh, 0 equals uh, 500. Um, well, now we have to uh, redefine our coefficients. So um, first, let's set the neighborhood radius, which is still 1, and time coefficient, which is still 1. Um, but then, for our points, we will have a equals um, this. And then we'll have b equals lambda squared over c1 which is this and then um, c will be c2 over c1 uh, which is this and then let's define what these two things are c1 equals um, then C2 is going to be the same with the sine inversion. As before, we can write mid coef equals um, B A B and mid coef the equals 0 C 0. We're not going to uh, implement any other boundary conditions. We can simply um, call our scheme function, well, declare. Uh, 
uh, now we can simply we, we will simply have a par iteration par e. oh, sorry points um, in coef in coef del we can keep this structure as before and let's try and run this yeah of course he is complaining because um, here I miswrote this let's run this and okay here we have it let's try this starts to be a bit more interesting at least um, it sounds more like a string we can decide where to excite it And so, as you can see, um, by using the library, it's way easier to um, write um, find different schemes in, uh, in Faust. Before concluding this tutorial, I would like to briefly show you something more advanced. So, uh, until now, to excite our model, we used an impulse directly sent through the mesh. And here I'm still on the dumped wave equation code with only five points. Uh, now, in reality, things are, of course, more complicated, and interaction is usually nonlinear, and it depends uh, on the current state of the of the mesh or of the model. Um, this is called coupling, and uh, now I'm going to show you um, how to um, implement this in Faust with an example. I had to reduce the zoom uh, for a, because of a GUI problem, but you can go to examples, physical modeling, FDS, um, piano hammer string. Okay, so let me reduce the number of points for more clarity. I'm gonna run. And this is our new process diagram. So as you can see, instead of having um, uh, only one sequence of functions as before, here we are taking the value of each point, feeding it back. And here we use an interpolation function to get only one of these signals, the one we are interested in, and to drive it inside the hammer function. This takes in the position of the point or the state of the point um, of the string that we want and outputs a force. And then we use another interpolation function to drive it to the string points uh, exactly as we were doing before. Here then, um, to get only one signal from one point out, we interpolate out exactly like we were doing before. And let me just show you the process function for this uh, example. This is just one big feedback loop, uh, it's what's inside here. So one interpolation function, the hammer function, which is inside the FD, li the FD library. Um, another interpolation function, the model, then a bus and interpolating out. So just to uh, let you hear how this sounds, uh, let me increase again the number of points. It takes a while, of course. And as you can see, this is a bit more interesting than before. Okay, this is the end of the workshop. And first of all, I would like to thank you all for your attention. And um, since time was limited, I had to rush on some topics. So if you have questions or if you want to deepen some of the things I talk about, you can reach me at this uh, email address. And um, yeah, bye.